Hi folks, this is Tristan from School of Synthesis here with a VCV Rack tutorial to hopefully help get you started with the world of modular synthesis. So VCV Rack is a software emulation of Euro Rack, which is a popular format of hardware modular synthesizers. And this version of the software I'm using is completely free, which is pretty amazing because it comes with a bunch of great sounding modules out of the box. Plus there's over 2000 modules you can download off their website, most of which are free, many of which are also open source. So it's also kind of advanced hacker friendly software as well, but great for beginners, great for anyone interested in any type of synthesis, in particular modular. But one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because modular synthesis can get a bit technical. So there are a couple of technical hurdles that can get in the way of people just getting started. So hopefully I can clear up a bit of that initial confusion for you and make your life a little bit easier. So let's get stuck in. What we're looking at here is the kind of basic default preset. So if you ever get lost, you can always click on file, then new, and we'll take it back to this preset, which is a great starting point. It gives you a good idea of how modules are meant to be hooked up and how it can sound. But for this purpose, let's start off almost completely from scratch. I'm gonna delete all these modules off the bottom row and most of these top row modules as well, except for these two. This is our MIDI input device and our audio output device. So this module is gonna take the data from my MIDI controller, which is an Ableton push. And this module is gonna take the audio from VCV rack and send it out to our audio interface. So now let's populate the rack with some synth components. I'm just gonna right click to go to the browser and you can just search for whatever modules you like. I'm gonna search for an oscillator. Here we go, voltage controlled oscillator. Let's bring in two of them. With our two oscillators, we're gonna need a mixer now. So let's search for a mixer. VCA mix is what we're after. Uh, we're gonna need a filter as well. Voltage controlled filter. And finally a voltage controlled amplifier, VCA. Okay, that's our basic primary signal path. Let's just tidy up the modules a little bit. Now let's patch things together. So this MIDI module is gonna take our MIDI controller data and convert it to virtual control voltage to control our voltage control components. One of the control voltage standards is volts per octave, which is what this socket is here. So let's take the volts per octave out, go into our volts per octave input of our first oscillator. Now we wanna do the same for the second oscillator and to run two cables, we can just hold down control or command on the Mac and drag a second cable. Okay, that's our two oscillators hooked up. Let's take a sawtooth wave out of oscillator one and go into the first channel of our mixer and a square wave out of our second oscillator into the second channel of our mixer. We can see those two channels have lit up, so something's working. Now let's take the mixer out to our filters input, then the low pass filter out to our amplifiers input. And when we connect the amplifier to our audio interface, we should hear some signal. Okay, that's great, it's working. I can control the pitch with my MIDI controller, but I can't control when the note starts and stops. To hook that up, we need an envelope to articulate our amplifier here. So let's hook that up. Let's go to the bottom row here and search for an ADSR envelope. And I'm just gonna bring in a second one while I'm here. Now we're gonna connect our first envelope to the control input of our amplifier. And now when I turn up the amplifier, you'll see the level's gone dark because the level's now being controlled by our envelope. Let's just reset this envelope back to a kind of nice starting position. And I can manually trigger the envelope just by pressing the push button. But a more common way is to use the gate signal from our MIDI device. So let's run a gate out to our envelope's gate input. Gate is essentially like note on, note off. Gate on, gate off, note on, note off. Okay, so our synth is basically fully functional now. We can control the pitch with our MIDI controller, and that's also controlling the volume with note on, note off, triggering the amplifier. So when I press a key, it triggers the attack, decay, and sustain stage. And when I release the key, it triggers the release stage. Okay, that's all well and good. Let's add a bit more expression by using a second envelope to control our filter's cutoff frequency. So I'm just gonna back off the cutoff frequency and connect the second envelope's output to the filter's cutoff frequency control input. We're also gonna trigger that with the gate signal from our MIDI device. And I'm just gonna reset this envelope back to my kind of go-to modulation starting point. And I'm just gonna repeatedly play a note and slowly increase the modulation depth control here until it sounds the way I want it to. It's a bit fast, let's slow down that decay a bit. Let's just tweak the oscillator settings a little bit. And let's change the oscillator to his pulse width. Okay, I 
things are sounding a bit more interesting, a bit more expressive, but let's change things up. So far I've been using a MIDI controller to control the pitch and the volume, but let's try using a sequencer instead. So I'm gonna delete our MIDI device and let's move these envelopes over a little bit. And in this blank space, I'm gonna add a sequencer. Okay, as the name suggests, this is essentially three sequences in one, three eight step sequences. There's sequencer one, sequencer two, sequencer three. So each sequencer has eight steps, each with its own value knob. So if this top sequencer was controlling a pitch, each of these knobs would be a different note. I'm just gonna set them to something random here. And let's take sequencer one CV out to control both of our oscillators into their volt per octave input. But in order to hear the signal, we need to somehow trigger our amplifier envelope on every step. Typically this is done using a sequencer's gate output, but it looks like the sequencer doesn't have a gate output, just this trigger output. The trigger output's like a very, very quick gate. To show you what that sounds like, I'm just gonna take the trigger out and go into our gate's input. And here it sounds very fast and very plucky. In fact, it's triggering the release date straight away. Normally a gate signal will alternate between positive and negative amplitudes. The positive amplitude will trigger the attack, decay, and sustain stage, and the negative amplitude will trigger the release stage. A trigger signal almost immediately jumps back to the negative amplitude. That's why we're triggering the release stage straight away. Now we can get around this just by increasing the envelope's release time. But it's a bit of a waste because we're not using the attack, decay, or sustain stages anymore. So the way to fix this up is just to right click on the sequencer and choose clock pass through. I'm not going to lie, that took me a little while to figure out, but that essentially transforms the trigger output into a traditional gate output. So now we can use it just like any other gate signal. It may sound a little bit jarring, that's because by default this gate output is a square wave. So it's 50% positive and 50% negative. That's why we're hearing it sustained for half of every step. Now normally the way around this would be to adjust the sequence's gate length, but it doesn't look like we have that parameter. Fortunately, in the world of modular, anything's possible, and we can easily hook up an alternate clock source with a variable gate length. I mentioned a gate is essentially a square wave, so we can really use any oscillator as an alternate clock source. So let's right click and look for an LFO. We only need a slow oscillator for this. And let's take the square wave out of this oscillator, go into our clock input. Okay, so we've replaced the sequence's internal clock, so now it's tempo knob won't do anything. We're instead controlling the tempo with our LFO's frequency. And our LFO also has a pulse width control, which is gonna become our gate length. So a shorter pulse width is like a shorter gate time. A wider pulse width is like a longer gate time. Let's also trigger our second envelope here. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of all the possibilities of modular synthesis. Just about anything's possible. It all comes down to your imagination, your creativity, and however you want to patch things up.